All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for coming out. Um, I know it's early for some of us. It's certainly a little early for me. Um, but I would like to start off with first introducing myself. My name is Victor. I come from a company called Sukuri. Uh, we specialize in website security. I like to start off at every some of these talks I come to work camp, you know, sort of providing a little more information about myself. Um, so if you see me enough, you might know me more than most. Uh, one thing, I'm an avid runner. Secondly, I'm a large video game enthusiast. Uh, so if you see me geeking out at some like Nintendo stuff around here, that's why. Um, but first and foremost, I'm a technical sales engineer for the company. And today, we are going to talk about recognizing as a business owner, as a website owner, how do you know, how can you identify that your site is in trouble? How can you know if your site's been hacked? And what does that mean? What does that mean for you? What does that mean for your business? So one thing I want to start off with is a quote um, from the CEO of, of the CEO of our company, which I really like. As website owners, we have a responsibility to, one, ensure that everyone that interacts with our websites have a safe online experience, and that everyone that interacts, ha well, rather, that all website owners should be good stewards of the internet by ensuring that we're not abusing the resources available to us. Quite a bit. So let's break that down a little bit. What does it mean to not abuse the resources? What does it mean to ensure that our visitors have a safe online experience? Because if we really think about it, at the end of the day, what we really want is to get online. We want to get our WordPress installation done, get our site out there, and you know, drive traffic, get people to see our site, buy our stuff, right? But we need to consider about all the people that we're inviting in, all the people we want flocking to the site. What kind of people are we inviting in? What kind of traffic does that look like? Because sometimes the traffic might be people, yeah, you know what? I really want to buy your product. I really want to read your blog. But sometimes that traffic is not friendly. Sometimes they're out to attack the website. So how many people here are comfortable in identifying that there's a problem with your website? That's not a lot of hands. That's not a lot of hands. So, and that's okay. It's okay to not know. Because the fact is, you know, as a business owner, how are you supposed to? How are you supposed to know that malware and hacks are part of this deal, right? You just wanted to run your business. So I want to take an example here and look at a website and compare that to what happens when the site does get attacked and how to identify when there's a problem. The specific site, you know, seems pretty... Pretty obvious, right? So design, favor, accessories. That's, that's what we want to show people. Look, this is my product. This is what I can deliver on. All right, it looks normal. But what happens when there's a problem? How many people have seen that before? Right? So we're, we're starting to identify, yeah, there's a problem with my site when I'm visiting it. All right? Talking about defacement. Defacement, when they're simply, you know, taking down the front of your page because, hey, you know what? Maybe this is some 17-year-old snuck-up kid who just had nothing, to do, nothing better to do with his time, right? I mean, it could be your kid, for all we know. Um, we're looking at this. This is very new, very recent, in terms of what we consider ransomware, meaning they will lock your site, and they will hold it at ransom and say, look, for so much Bitcoin, which is so much money, I will give you back access to your site. And that's assuming if you pay them, they actually give you access back to your site. Right? So imagine that as a business owner, you're logging on to check how your site's running, how the new theme looks, how that new plugin is functioning, and then you see that. Now, there are other instances where it's a little less obvious. So you're logging into your site, and whoa, Facebook pops up. Oh, shoot, maybe, you know what, must have hit a bookmark, must have hit a shortcut, but it looks like I logged off, so let me log on. Except if you look at the URL bar, you'll notice that's not a real Facebook address. What happens is people accessing your site, all those, all those people visiting your site are being redirected to what we consider a phishing lore, meaning they are phishing for information, anything that will personally identify your, your audience. And now we're, taught, now we're really getting into abusing resources, right? We don't want our site to be a vessel for people having their information stolen. Consider your brand reputation there. Oh, you know, every time I visit that site, they're trying to get my information, and they put that on you instead of the attacker. How are people to know? 
Now, let's look at the, another form of attack that's also less obvious. The site might be fine. The site might still show design favor accessories, you know, okay, great. But then if you're looking, if you're searching for the site in Google search results, you're going to notice there, whoa, prescriptions. I, I'm, I'm doing accessories, you know, or I'm, send, I'm, I'm trying to sell clothing. Why, why is my Google search result propping up Viagra, Cialisis, right? Something we call a pharma hack, where people are, you know, injecting things into your database to, you know, sort of prop this up and flag your site as a problem because the last thing your site needs to be known for is, oh, they sell Cialisis at half off. No. This one. Now, how many people have seen this roaming the internet every once in a while trying to find anything else, right? Yes, and now we, we've seen this before. You know, the site may be hacked. How many people are going to visit this site if they see this message? Not one person's going to visit this site. It's custom hot tubs. But of course not. Why would you? The site might be hacked. The site might present a problem to you and everyone trying to visit your site, harming your brand on top of it, right? You're going to go to this site if it says this? That's a brave soul up there. The guy said yes. All right. And that's fine. You know, you might enter the site, you might download software onto your computer. So now we're not talking even just about the site. Now we're affecting everything on your way to the website. And now we're coming back to a safe online experience. That, this is not, of course, a safe online experience for your audience. You don't want that for everyone coming to your site. You want people to come to your site to say, yeah, they have a great product. I bought it. It shipped on time. Or it was a great theme that I purchased. And that was the goal. We don't want to worry about this. But... You know, Google plays a large part in this as well in terms of, like, what can happen and what can you do. Blacklisting. How many people have heard of the term blacklisting? There you go. So you all can understand what that means when there's a problem on your website. And when we're going down this road, you know, about, like, what kind of attacks there are, you know, there, the list doesn't end. But what you need to understand as business owners is there is you know, some investment in time, some investment financially to ensure that you provide the best experience to everyone visiting your website. I mean, consider that basically anyone making any search result on the internet, 80% of everyone doing that goes through Google. Google is prominently known for blacklisting, as you might know, for, a, you know, saying, yeah, that site might be hacked. Because most people are going to see that same message we saw earlier. You know, so here's the thing. There are a couple things that you can do with, in terms of a relationship with Google that will alert you to a problem. Google Webmasters, how many people have heard of that? How many people are using that? Good. For those that don't, you should really consider doing it. For one thing, it's free. Secondly, they will let you know with time before the site's blacklisted that, hey, there might be malicious files on your website, right? They will, let, they will give you a heads up to the problem instead of, you know, having it linger, you may never know, that pharma hack that we looked over that you may never have noticed searching your own site on Google. They'll let you know. And most of all, on top of everything else, it's free, right? You don't have to make an investment into a tool like that. It's valuable that someone like Google who has much of a presence online you know, is letting you know about our problem before it gets to it. So let's go back to this. The site may be hacked. This is your site, and you have, you know, you're trying to figure out, what do I do? I, I, don't, I don't know how to fix that. So you go to Google, who alerts you, and they have all these guides there, and, you know, you're trying to get rid of that blacklisting warning because now it's really gotten out of hand after a week. Well, let's consider the impact if we let that lie. As business owners, how many people here, of course, are familiar with SEO? Right. Hey, wow. See, they, yeah, everyone knows about SEO. Everyone knows about driving traffic. You want to rank high in certain keywords. So, you know, after a couple of days, you know, okay, your site's been hacked, Google's let you know, and then suddenly your site's been blacklisted, and your SEO tanks. They will remove you from whatever page you were before and stick you at the back of the line until you fix the problem. Now, consider how much work you might have put into maybe ranking number one or ranking top five or top ten into getting people to visit your site. 
right? We don't, no one wants that. No, I wouldn't want that. So what can you do? Well, Google gives you some good guidance. You know, things about how to clean and maintain your site moving forward. You know, the things you need to do, you know, having shell and terminal administrator access and knowing shell and terminal commands. How many people actually know those two things? So a whole lot more of you raised your hand knowing blacklisting, but not this. And Google's telling you, you need to know this. Well, that's not always the case. And that's okay, it's not a problem. But you know, I, I can, you know, it can be very intimidating when something like that happens and you're not sure what to do. And there's no ri big red button that tells you, oh yeah, press here and your site's fixed. It's not always that easy. Especially if you don't have that kind of knowledge to comb through all your code, to go through your database and figure out what's going on. Because as a website owner, what is your primary goal as a website owner? Who can tell me that? Make money, right? You want to make money. That's your primary goal. That, that's the only thing you want to be thinking about when you're running your website, when you're you know, trying to you know, update your inventory. That's the main goal. So the idea, of course, is understanding how do I get there? How do I restore my ranking? Well, the, you know, sometimes a lot of it is investing in a solution, in the resources, like even just the free resources of Google Webmaster. You have time to figure out a, an answer to the problem. But what does that really cost? I mean, I'm saying that, yeah, Google Webmaster is free, but Maybe it's too late for me. I, maybe I've been blacklisted. What does that cost? So I like to tell this story um, because it's the one that resonated most with me. Um, I had a client once, 4th of July last year, who was on a five-day vacation. And she's calling me July 3rd in a panic, in a frenzy, because her site's down. The host shut down the account. Her site's been blacklisted by Google, by McAfee, and she doesn't know what to do. All right, okay, don't worry about it. You know, we'll, we'll get it fixed for you. So after three days, we have the site fixed. The site's been delisted from the blacklist of Google. And, you know, she comes back to me and she's like, you know, thank you for helping, but I feel like I need to tell you what happened. I'm like, well, what happened? She tells me that as part of her five-day vacation, she was stuck in her hotel room for two days trying to figure out how to get her site back online. You imagine being on vacation, trying to worry about this with family around you, and you don't have time to spend with them, the money you spent wherever it is that you went to go on vacation. Moreover, she was selling like high-end couture accessories and products, you know, like you know, bracelets and the like. And she was telling me, you know, every time she leaves on vacation, she's expecting $11,000 in revenue easily. She didn't make any of that. So she lost $11,000 in three days because of an issue like this. So the cost sometimes isn't necessarily like, what do I have to invest to ensure that my site's fine, or you know, maybe getting a firewall or someone who can respond to me with cleanup. Sometimes the cost or the consequences of your site getting hacked. Because I don't think she ever would have imagined $11,000 gone in three days that she never would have had because no one could access her site. How could they? Especially if they had that site maybe hacked, none of you would have gone to visit her site because I wouldn't, except for apparently that guy over there who was very brave enough to do so. But when we consider what can you do in a circumstance like that, you know, there are a lot of easy steps to you know, sort of go about you know, making sure that everything is fine with your site. And of course, first and foremost, it's updating the site, right? Your WordPress installation, your themes, your plugins, everything that you're utilizing to make sure your site is up, make sure you're up to date. Because a lot of times what you don't realize is that while those fixes may provide a better user experience or a backend experience for you, for the most part, they probably have important security fixes that you don't realize are there. It's no different than updating every app on your phone. Sometimes it's not updating because it's trying to make the scroll bar a little better or the text a little nicer. It's because they're trying to do something to protect you. 
I could go through this list. Um, you know, there's some a lot of good a lot of good um, items here that are you know free in terms of understanding like what would your host do in a situation like this. You know, just that kind of information gathering. But I want to sort of get back to this quote a little bit um, and understand that you know as website owners we do have a responsibility on us because we're the ones putting the website out there and using the resources available to us to ensure that everyone that interacts with our site does have a safe online experience. Understanding that we want our visitors to come in, come out, and not feel like you know, they've been swindled. Not feel like they have to look over their head because they saw a funny pop-up come up during your site. You have to understand that, you know, as website owners, we do have a responsibility to be good stewards of the internet, making sure that, you know, we're not using our top ranking Google search results to fish for information on your, on your visitors, stealing credit card info or stealing their name and email and phone number when you have a contact form up. We, you know, because we certainly wouldn't want that visiting other people's sites. We wouldn't want that visiting a website developer site who's trying, you know, we're asking for help. And then, you know, sort of passing on the kindness in a sense. So that's what I have. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, my name is Victor. I work for Sakuti. And thank you for taking the time to come in. Uh, you know, have a happy work camp. If you have any questions, feel free to come down. I'll be more than happy to answer. On? There you go. Someone down here asked about redirects. Redirects are very similar to sort of what I showcased earlier with the Facebook page. Um, in some instances, it's a more of a, it's more enticing for someone to use a redirect hack to say access your site, and you get sent off to that Facebook page, and your that person is putting in information that's being sent out somewhere else through some, you know, PHP mail script. Other instances, it's a little more obvious where all of a sudden the site's being redirected to maybe a similar looking site of yours. Right? Maybe they sort of just copy and paste you know, templates and information, and then when someone's making a purchase, they're not actually making a purchase. Um, those kinds of things, I mean, can reveal itself in different forms, HT access files, if you're familiar with it. Um, but in most cases, you really want someone or so, you know, somewhere to go to to be able to properly identify if that's a problem. Because if you're noticing it on your own site, then you should consult someone who can provide better responses for you. Sure. Uh, so someone asked, why is it that you get so many hits from all over the world regarding that kind of thing? So one thing to keep in mind, especially about when you're trying to figure, you know, when you're th thinking about even just attacks, like where they come from, most of these things are automated, like just bots, you know, hitting, pinging your site because either they're trying to test access or they're trying to, you know, see what they can do in terms of accessing your, you know, your site's files and everything in, in, on the administrative end. Um, so, for the most part, when, if you're looking at your SEO and you're looking at your hits and you're looking at your logs um, and you start seeing that, you know, for the most part, really you're focused on the states and Canada, but you're seeing random IPs from Turkey, from Russia, China, you know, there are some instances where it might be a valid access to your site. It might be someone actually from China or Turkey trying to access your site. Some other cases, it's them trying to test to see what they can do. Um, there are a lot of good plugins and resources online that let you track that. Um, similarly, if you're running on WordPress, for example, uh, we have a free plugin that will let you track people even logging into your, your back end of WordPress when you go into WP Login. Something that will alert you to a problem like, you know, hey, look, I've got like 50 emails telling me that this IP is trying to access my site. You know, these are people trying to get in. They're trying to force their way uh, into your environment. So. So 
to what you do is depend, you know, I suppose it depends a lot on, you know, what you're comfortable with knowing. I mean, if, you know, there are ways you can write rules in your HD access file to block IPs if you can recognize them. There are web application firewalls out there that will block that kind of thing outright, recognizing whether that traffic is malicious or not. Um, you know, so I would definitely first and foremost go to your host to see what solutions they can provide you or recommendations they can make for you for an instance like that. Um, we don't, and you're not going to find many people who will approach suspected attackers because for the most part, what you may think might be the university attacking your site might be actually someone using another computer, another site, and another resource, just sort of like the mask where the origin's from. So that it's possible that actually their network, well, maybe unlikely, but got compromised, and, and they, they, you think it might be coming from the states, but it could be anywhere else. It could be an anonymizing IP, something that they're trying to mask, to hide, to make sure that they don't get caught, right? Um, so it's part of that. You're not going to find many people who do that kind of forensic, you know, retrace analysis, but um, there's, you know, on your part and anyone's part, there's always measures you can take to ensure that even if maybe it was from there or anywhere else, that you know, those kinds of requests that are being made on your site on specific, like, folders or subfolders and plugins um, don't result in a hack. You know, those, that's the best resources or best information I can give you on that. Yeah, I would say, um, and I, I'm hoping that everyone's able to hear, um, you know, his his interest in this. So, I would say that there are a lot of resources that they are able to tap into. That's not simply the back end of WordPress. I mean, if they have your domain and they're trying to, you know, log in with a similar file path to log in, odds are they've pinged your site to identify your hosting IP, right? That you know that one, you know, like a 192.88.248.5, like understanding that, okay, I know that's the hosting IP, so let me get into an FTP manager and try different username and combinations there to have direct access to your spy files. A lot of times, you know, these attacks are automated, so it's not so much that they're trying to guess one username and that's how it goes. So, you know, a lot of our information is out there. So, you know, my site is, you know, santoyohats.com, right? And they can find my last name, my first name that I might put on the site, Odds are they're probably going to get what city I'm from, you know, other things like that, and they're going to use typical, you know, like I would say variations of how people create username and passwords, like first initial last names, last name first name. Um, maybe they can identify family members. Okay, so maybe I'm putting just the last name in my birthday or my zip code or you know things like this. And and these are the kinds of things where you also need to consider about the access you're creating. Like when you have a username and password. Make sure that no one can understand why you have that username and password. You know, I, I don't, I try to avoid using, you know, anything identifying me or my family in anything with passwords because passwords are the one thing that people, 
people get lazy about. You know, we want to just say, ah, something, one, two, three. Or, what's my password? I forgot. You know, I, <laughs> I had a guy who, um, or, or password. No, I had another clever guy who was like, you know, I know what my password's going to be. And I'm like, what is it going to be? He's like, well, see, every time I try to log in and I forget, it tells me my password is incorrect. So incorrect will be my password. And I'm like, oh, no, it's not how that works. But, you know, that, that's the kind of thing you should also be, like, conscious of. As long as you have a strong password, you know, like 16 characters, you know, with a, with a hash tie and explanation mark and numbers and letters, you should be fine. But knowing that kind of information is pivotal. And I would, I would implore you to sort of look into ways to be able to just to block that access outright when you get it. Um, a lot of what you also want to, and it's something you're touching on, right? Know who your audience should be. Do you want people from or halfway around the world visiting your site? If you do, great. Take precautions to make sure it's the right people. If you don't, and your audience is strictly, yeah, I'm, I'm a local person. I really only need Miami, Spanish-speaking people looking on my site, or I'm in the States and Canada. That's the only people I want to reach. Then ensure that those are the only people you're reaching. Invest in a resource that'll let you country block, or block IPs if you can find them. No, I would say 12 at least. Um, I use a 16-character uh, password. Um, sort of touching on the last thing there, like passwords shouldn't mean that complexity. It should be 16 digits. Should have a combination of upper lowercase letters, numbers, special characters, in no discernible order. There are resources like LastPass. Has anybody here heard of LastPass? Great. For anyone who doesn't, you should definitely use it. They will let you auto-generate a password of that complexity. I mean, just jargon, you never would understand it. Um, they let you save it within an, um, it's free, you would save it within an, an, a master account where you can track all your passwords. So every time you visit your Gmail, your WordPress, your hosting, Facebook, anything else, you don't have to remember those passwords, it'll auto-populate it for you. Um, because, you know, most, I'm guessing that some people here might end up using the same passwords for multiple platforms. Right? You might be using your same password for Gmail, for your banking, for your, you know, your website, for anything else, and that wouldn't be key. So it's not even simply having a complex password, it's making sure that those passwords are also different for everything you're logging into. Um, and brute force is you know, a lot of what we've been touching on here, like you know, basically bombarding your door and trying to guess the lock combination. That, and it, it happens every single day, you know, and, Plugins like what this gentleman here mentioned about tracking the IPs or being able to block it or just identify it give you visibility into what's going on. Um, I think I'm out of time. I'm not sure. So if you have any more questions, feel free to come down. I'm also at the sponsor table there. We're Sukuri, and uh, have a great day.